Hi Key Shooter. In today's video, we are going to have a look at how to create a material like you see in this animation. And first of all, a disclaimer. This is not a tutorial showing how to create a 100% correct looking carbon fiber material, but it should be rather seen as an inspiration on how you can use the material graph and the procedures inside KeyShot to create materials from the bottom. So even though it might have similarities to carbon fiber, it is not 100% correct. Use it if you think it looks cool, or and otherwise use uh, the tricks that you learned from this tutorial to create your own material. With that said, let's uh, jump into the key shot scene. And a few notes on this setup. Um, the model I'm going to use as the, the base for the material is this a speed shape model by a guy called Jeff Pattern. And the lighting I'm using for this scene is uh, one called Studio 17 from uh, a package download on DeviantArt. And I have links for both of uh, the model and the uh, HDRI in the description below. If you want to have a look at the final material without building it from the bottom up, you can always go to my Gumroad shop and download it from there or from the Keisha Cloud, it should be up there as well soon. With that out of the way, let's jump into the actual material creation. First thing I do is to uh, double click on the material so we get the properties up here. And first thing I want to do is to change the type to an isotropic. And before doing anything else, I'm going to uh, continue in the material graph. So I open that up by clicking the material graph button here. And as always, there's a little of a bit of rearranging needed for that. All right. I double click on this anisotropic material and change the color to black. And for the specular, I'm going to uh, keep it at uh, a light gray color. With that in place, I am going to adjust these uh, roughness settings X and Y. And for this first layer, I'm going to uh, have a roughness in the X at 0.3. And in the Y, I'm going with a small value of 0 0.1, 0 0.01. And what this does is that uh, the roughness of the material is different um, in the two directions. So right now, it's uh, the roughness is way more pronounced in, in the X direction than in the Y direction. Next step is to make a duplicate of this material. So right click and hit duplicate. And that new layer uh, I'm going to put on top of this first one. And for this new layer, make sure that you have that uh, selected. I'm going to uh, change these two values, just shift them around. So here in the X, we have 0 0.01 and in the roughness Y we have 0.3. So there's nothing much to see yet, but by adding in a um, a texture, a mesh polygon that we're going to use for the opacity map, uh, this uh, material will start to take shape. With that in and selected, hit the C button on the keyboard to show the color information. And for this material, we want to have a perfect checker pattern. And you, you can use the uh, mesh polygon to create that. First of all, I'm going to bump up the scale so we can see what's going on. And to create um, the perfect checker pattern, we're going to use a lattice angle of 45 and a spacing of 0 0.707. Maybe it's here. And one. 45, spacing U1 and spacing V, 0 0.707. That creates a perfect checker pattern. So if we um, hit the X button to get out of this color preview, we can see the, uh, the masking of the two materials. And because we have the uh, this anisotropic roughness uh, opposite of them, we get this clear checker pattern effect. If it was the same, there would be nothing to see, all right? So 
so this material is starting to take shape but we want to add in some more details first of all i want to create um, the look um, of some fibers in these uh, in on this material so i'm going to add in a texture uh, called brushed and again i start by hitting the c on the keyboard to see the uh, the color information and adjust the scale to point one two five and i drag that into the bump channel of this uh, first layer and i am going to adjust the bump height to one let's see um If we disable this overlay, we can see the uh, the bump map here. All right, cool. And we want um, to use the same bump map for this uh, this other anisotropic overlay material. So I duplicate this brush texture and drag it into the bump. And for this, we want to ro rotate it in 90 degrees. So I go into the texture and down to the angle and type in 90. So we get the threads flowing in the other direction. So right now, right now it's, uh, it burns out a lot, this material. So I'm going to change the specular color uh, for both of the layers down to 84. And now it's uh, also easier to see these uh, threads that we into the bump map. I also want to show that there's some level difference on these uh, on these two different directions of, of materials. So I'm going to copy this uh, mesh polygon texture and drag it, that into the bump channel um, for the uh, for the first layer. And to do that, we have to add in this bump utility node. Uh, bump add and so I drag that into bump one and the brush texture into bump two and we can now drag both of those into bump channel for the anisotropic material. It's a bit hard to see if something happened at all so I'm just going to drag that directly into the bump channel. Um, let's see oh yeah bump height is at point one so we might need to bump that up to see anything. So now it becomes visible that there are some uh, a bit of depth to this uh, material. So let's just uh, drag this bump add in again. And it still shows great. All right. Last thing we need to do with this material is to add a uh, the look of a clear coat on top of all of this. And to do that, I'm going to use a trick that I uh, learned from Will Gibbons on the Keyshot forum. And that is to add in a, a plastic material that is black and uh, specular at white. And we're going to add that, that in as a label on top of everything to make the anisotropic materials visible beneath this plastic material. I'm going to add in a vertex color texture that I put into the opacity channel of the plastic material. And by adjusting this default color, I can uh, control the amount of reflection from this plastic material we want to show. All right, so if we have it at white, we only see the plastic material. If we have it at black, we only see the anisotropic materials. So by choosing a gray scale color, a gray color, we uh, something in between black and white we get both materials showing up i think this looks quite great and you can always afterwards also adjust the color or go into the plastic material and adjust this uh, refraction index if you want to make these shiny reflections more pronounced and with that in place i am done with this material Again, this is not a 100% correct carbon fiber material, but I think there's a lot of neat tricks uh, about the material graph and how you can use procedurals to uh, mask and layer and uh, do stuff 
to create your own cool materials. So I hope it was helpful to some of you and uh, thanks for watching. Take care.